Shahli Sadri wa Yassili Amri. A bit further on our uh, literacy journey, we were talking about reading, right? And the reading is about, it is not just about, it's about making comprehension, but the bits that we read out are words. Words are the building blocks. Let's talk a little bit about uh, words so that we in our planning in our dealing with the uh, with the language and uh, with the learner we understand some of the dimensions which we might be omitting uh, and at then we will see how many dimensions are there uh, which have a huge which create a lot of innovation space for us okay let's start with every word has a history right we agree it has a history. If it, I, I, I am writing the word Sunday, obviously the word Sunday has some history. Or if I am writing October, where is the October coming from, has some history. So that's very important that uh, we double click when we are playing with the words, we a little bit pause and tell the learner about where does it come from so that he doesn't just pass through. It's a Bluetooth, ooh, Bluetooth, or oh, it's a democracy. Should stop over and say, oh, democracy, what is it? And where did it come from, right? So it has a history. That means it has uh, some etymology, some uh, roots or something, right? So uh, that's one dimension. And every word has a sound right it sounds like something i remember when we were in school we used to uh, to read this as elite nobody simply bothered to correct us it's elite or elite or whatever and we continued with that right so it's important that we are aware of it if it is an import and it's import by changing this sound it changes from noun to verb or verb to noun sometimes. So that, that's one part of it. Words might be associated with, with, with emotions. I, I, I would uh, kind of rather uh, ask teachers to go Google Plachnik cycle, right? They will find it on the Google and lots of words on the emotions. Oh, and they will find out okay, what are the basic emotions and what, what kind of new emotions come when the anger and the sadness mix and when the sadness and the fear mix and then the fear and the anger mix. So these emotions uh, then have gradients, right? I might be uh, sad or gloomy or depressed or anxious or vexed or am I describing or able to uh, identified what kind of uh, feeling I have. It's, a, it's a, some basic feeling of anger or sadness or fear or a mix of them and to what degree. So th th that's one dimension. The, the child might be aware of one part of it but she might not be aware of another part of it. Words have families. Uh, it is a word with a photograph. It's a photographic, photographically maybe the photons, uh, so maybe the photosynthesis. So the one word which came across was photo, but that generated a lot of linkages uh, to photosynthesis to, uh, and the synthesis can later come with a synchronize and synchronize can later go to a chrono means what uh, and what is uh, uh, chronological and chronic. So, it has families, the simple photo and photograph and photographic and photographically. So there are uh, parts of the word which are morphemes. So words can be seen a little bit surgically into it and it has a family inside. Word has words which uh, fall in its neighborhood, let's say. Not exactly of this family, but there are words falling around it and which might confuse us. There's a word may and a word will come which is might and it may be a similar 
a closer to it or it's a propose uh, and it is a suggest and we can never assume that the two words have identically uh, same meaning there might be a shade of difference between them and the fact is that no two words in a language are just totally identical they aren't so words have a lot of fun with its uh, structure it has a form and a uh, structure which must be a little uh, seen with some words combined to make words portmanteaus some words are interesting that if you reverse them they look like the same the palindromic right and some words are portmanteau type uh, like a box you can uh, s two sides of the box like avionics it comes from aviation and electronics podcast news cost chillax let's chill and relax so it becomes a chillax or maybe the chinglish or hindi and english is hinglish right whatever uh, burden i am carrying from my original uh, first language to second language that burden or that style is called accent so the accent will always remain you can always identify that irfan sirfraz is coming from punjab and most of the people identify because that's an accent that will remain with me the way i uh, the way the structures of my first language work will certainly interfere with the structure how we learn the second language so this is an accent this is not a bad thing this this will come natural we don't have to slavishly follow uh, to say kashmir and say the kashmir because some european can't say kashmir and he's saying kashmir no retain your accent be yourself so that's very important uh, fortnight double click and the child will see you double clicking when you select some words from that the story do you lost read and start doing these kind of stuff and make a word map and make a word story and linkages and families as association on the word wall this will be an exciting so fortnight is probably 14 nights and intercom so play with the structure of the word is an endless thing which uh, we can and words can be can be uh, in its use can be formal informal that's very important to know what kind of dialogue they are writing or they are writing a, a serious business letter or whatever in the real life think about and they can be what maybe blow up and can be inflate so we might be using inflate in the in the formal sense or there is a word mob and there is a crowd uh, so maybe the uh, in the journalism mob is good enough but in the serious writing or in the reporting we prefer to write crowd likewise uh, words have words within words right as we said bluetooth or as we said uh, anything photojournalism let's say if i write photojournalism so there's lots of words within it photojournalism so what is photo and what is journalism and what is journal and what journal has to do with the diary so a loss of knowledge comes from different sources words can change their meanings that must also go very uh, clear to the students that yeah today we have this meaning words have a history so they have changed meanings uh, just few examples are for example now we use the word adult whenever we say the adult movie that means there's a pornographic movie or we say the word box box means in the retail it's in the sense that things in the same box or the package you have to take it all of them or when we say the real world uh, that means uh, not the world which is in the academics or not related to the real world so the world change a very interesting example from our culture is uh, to the prophet's companion hazrat ali radhiyallahu anhu they call it mushkil kusha the hazrat ali was very good in the knowledge and at the pinnacle and people used to come with his uh, with their very difficult uh, decisions and uh, real life things ki how do they divide their properties and how do they do this and he used to solve it so they uh, the companions called him halalul maakid when that word came into the persia it became mushkil kusha and when that came to punjab they thought if my bike is not starting i have to call mushkil kusha so that's how the word carries 
a meaning and changes its meaning and in that culture it might be totally different something. So the words have its own kind of a flavors and uh, if words have so many of interesting things and it's very easy for teachers these days or even in earlier days you just have to see the dictionary see the word and one word has tremendous sort of uh, uses i mean just three four days back some parents texted me they said what's the meaning of word cell uh, they could have done it on they could have googled it they could have seen a dictionary but somehow they sent me so, you know, the cell in biology has a meaning cell is a battery cell cell is a death cell in jail cell has a different meaning in so just 20 different meanings of the cell and what so that's how you can connect one word to, to science and technology, to sociology, to linguistics, to business economics, the child sees it connecting at a lot of places. Knowing a word and its meaning never means we know 100%. Do has 200 different shades of meanings in that, in that uh, uh, dictionary. But the habit of clicking, I come across a word salary and I never uh, see where has it come from. It has something with the salt. Yes, it has. But what is then wages? What is then earning? What is saving? So lots of these things will uh, uh, come around that word and that makes fun and that builds up my associations. So the point to make is, was it possible that we could, uh, our children could have this kind of uh, things happening in the class and they have my favorite words? I remember uh, where, uh, we had never this kind of thing. We were never told how, what is a dictionary and what is a thesaurus and how to use it and wh what are the various things in the dictionary. What does the dictionary tell about the sounds, about the etymology, about the uh, syllables, about the usage? Nothing. It never happened. At least in my time, uh, lifetime, 16 years of education, it never happened. Right? There was only one particular use of the word in that particular story in the sentence and that's all finished. So how come then we expect the child from that coming with, with that words are vehicles and gears for ideas and we don't need to emphasize it and sh what should happen is that children should enjoy words, should choose their own words, they become sort of word lovers, word collectors, a, a, a linguist and if a word comes before them, let's say butterfly they start thinking what it has to do with the butter, yeah, fly makes sense. If don't, don't double click, that is exactly the problem we are saying. That is exactly the problem of a child has stopped asking questions because he has never seen his teacher making these sort of questions and connections. Thank you very much.